make a tree skirt. This is Marina from Frogs and Frolics and I'm going to show you exactly how we're going to do this. So we need red and white and then we've got little black hats and we've got uh, yellow little carrot noses. We need green for trees and then I have a really dark blue for the night sky, fur for the trim, that's the snow. And then we've got a really beautiful check lining. I think that's always fantastic for Christmas and some wadding. You want some really slim wadding or batting and this one is way too thick so I'm going to rip mine uh, in half. You can actually do that with wadding. It's not difficult. You can just rip it and then it's not so thick. I just couldn't find anything else. Then we also need Wonderweb or Pelon Under in the United States and that's an adhesive film that is ironed to the felt so that we can position it easier and just iron pieces on that we need. And then I've also got some textile 3D paint from Lumiere in Marabou and we're going to do the faces with that. So let's get started. First of all, you need to check that you've printed off your pattern correctly. So you need to measure the scale. It needs to be five centimeters or an inch. On the first page, you've got trees and you've also got a little diagram that shows you how everything needs to be applied. You don't want to cut out the trees. You want to leave them on the paper. They're just going to be traced off. And the same goes for the small snowman and the larger snowman. What we do need to cut out is the tree skirt and the trim. So you want to cut everything out first. And then we're going to join the pieces together. Then alphabetical order, A, B, C, D and E. And then you put those together and then you put the second row together. So it's always the same system with my patterns. And there you go. We've got the tree skirt together already. And then we are also going to correctly put together the trim. And again, that's in alphabetical order. So we need the circle once in the fed, once in the wadding and once in the lining. So layer it all up, put your tree skirt over the top, cut out one half, then flip over your tree skirt to the other side to cut the other half out. And then we're going to open the tree skirt and one of the areas, preferably where you have a straight grain on your lining and cut out the little circle in the center. And that's basically it. We can start. You want to move off the lining. You keep that to the end and the wadding and the felt I'm going to join with a few pins in strategic places just so that it can't go anywhere. And that's all I do. And now I'm going to cut my fur trim as well. I'm cutting it on the fold, so make sure the seam allowance stands over if you're doing that. Otherwise, it will be a little bit too big. And now I'm going to place it on top of my felt and cut it open in one area as well. Make sure that the center front of your trim lies exactly opposite of the slit so that it works with my little diagram so you can actually use that. Now we're going to start tracing everything onto the pelon under. So smooth side of the pelon under up, we're going to trace out all the things as the pattern tells you to. So all the trees need to be cut four times. So you want to move it over until you have four and keep tracing them out. Um, it's, been <laughs> it's a bit time consuming, but this is the quickest way to do this. I have seen people cut out the little trees, don't do that. So now I've traced them all out. Whatever I've got left over from my pelon under, I keep safe because there are loads of little bits I can use it for. So I put that to the side. And basically I'm going to do the same with everything else. I'm tracing my carrot nose here five times and then I'm going to put that away and then I'm tracing the next bit and I do each one of those bits five times and that's my little hat. When I've traced all my bits they're going to be ironed to the underside of uh, the fabric I'm using and for felt it doesn't really matter because it's the same from both sides. You want to make sure that when you've ironed it on that the pelon under almost looks like it's see-through and you can't pick off the gluey part anymore. That's real important. When everything is done like this it's a lot of pieces so you don't get confused. You want to maybe put them, I don't know, um, I've got a little tool box here and I'm putting the little snowman in one box, a big snowman in another box and then I'm also going to 
put the different trees into different compartments so I can't get them confused. And again, I can just take um, all these pieces now and settle down with a nice cup of coffee and maybe a uh, rom-com or something and cut this all out because it's a bit time consuming. Now before you cut out, I want to show you a little trick because when you have the tiny little bits, it's quite hard to lift the paper off and I'm just lifting it off a little bit from the side and then I'm cutting the first part out. That's so I can easily lift it off. Apparently when you like run your nail over the paper, really sharpish as well that works, but when the pieces are really small that might actually pull the felt, so we don't want to do that. So now I've cut everything out and it's absolutely super perfect. I can start putting it all together. It's like a little puzzle. Make sure the paper backing has been removed and I'm going to put the big snowman under first. So everything that disappears underneath the snow needs to be put on first. So make sure it's low enough. And then I can put all the little bits that were for the snowman on from the little mittens to the twig arms, just everything and I place them on where they need to go and then I iron that into place so it can't go anywhere. Next we're going to iron on the little snowman and again he disappears behind the snow so he goes on first and the same with that tree. One of the trees disappears behind the snow so we want to iron that tree on as well. Then we're going to slip stitch the trim all the way around. So because we've got like these rounds here, we need to snip it so we can actually turn it so there's no tension. And then it's just a lot of slip stitching again, which again, I think that um, I could have slip stitched the whole lot actually, not use the sewing machine at all. Just put on Titanic and there you go, you've got something to do. Make sure that you do it so that the little snowman is covered all the way around. See mine isn't quite low enough so I'm just fiddling it a little bit. Now I can put my mittens over the top and iron those on and then I put the rest of the little snowman on as well because the rest of it is all over the snow you see. I'm using an ironing cloth. You don't necessarily need to do that but it, what a shame if it started melting. I never trust any of these polyester acrylic felts. And I'm also putting on all my trees which go over that snow border. Next get yourself uh, some matching thread and then we're going to slip stitch to all the little mittens and the nose. And I've done that here, it's already done. I actually spent another evening with a rom-com which wasn't a bad thing and I slip stitched it all the way around because those bits really are too small to stitch them with a sewing machine. And now we can go over to the sewing machine and actually stitch around all the rest of the bits. And this will take you quite a little bit of time. And always try to stitch so that you can do things in one go. So I'm coming up, say, on this scarf and then going around. Make sure that the needle is always down when you come around on anything. So you have as few coming on and coming off you know as possible because you've got so much stuff there underneath that um, sewing machine and it's really quite thick you want to just be able to go the hat I actually did with a triple stitch because I had a black hat on a blue background and that just didn't really stand out so I thought I go around in white and I use the triple stitch so that you can see it a little bit better. And if there's any grannies amongst you that have the same problem as me, I can't really see that black on blue, it's a good idea to count your stitches and then always do the same. Three across, two down and then a certain number across again and then two up and three across because I actually stitched it blind. And then when I'm done, I can put all the bobbles on, the little pom-poms for the hats, which I thought was so, so cute. I mean, they're so cheap. They come from that little packet here. Just take one out and stitch it on, go all the way through the pom-pom. I like bobble a lot better, don't you? I like bobble, bobble hat. <laughs> okay, so go over to the other side. You might want to go through twice and then we're just going to secure that one. 
I've also put more of these on like little snowflakes, which I think is really super cute. Finally, we can put the lining over the top. Right sides need to be facing each other. In my case, um, again, the fabric was the same both sides. I put some pins in vertical to all the seams I'm going to do so that I don't have to take any of the pins out and we're going to stitch all the way around but we're going to leave an opening gap. Now I've done that, all we need to do is cut back the corners, maybe a little bit along the seams as well, we don't want this to be too thick and definitely cut back the wadding that sticks over because that's going to make it awful thick in there. So we're going to cut all of that back We also want to snip around the center here. Just make sure that that's all done. It needs to be really nice and snip to the seam so that we can turn it, that there's no tension. And then through that turning gap, I grab the far side of my tree skirt and I pull it through. Don't rip anything. I did. <laughs> Don't make that turning gap too small. I'm just so lazy. <laughs> So I ripped it a bit, but never mind. I'll just um, sew the chat and nobody can see it. So now I'm going to just pin it, turn it over, thread up a needle, and I'm going to slip stitch this shut as well. And the nice thing working with felt is that you really can't see many of the mistakes. If you have made any, you won't see it. It's really cool. And then I press it from the underside. Lots of heat, lots of steam so that it's really nice and flat from the other side and smooth. And then finally I can put the faces on and I just want to explain what I'm using. I'm using a Marabu fashion liner in white and a Lumiere 3D paint. So I would have a little practice go. I'm also doing a pattern on my scarves and I found that the faster you go the easier it is. You also want to not scrape across the felt but hover slightly above it so that you get a really smooth line. I did a black example as well and then I left it overnight to see what it looked like the next morning. What I did find is that the white really sunk into the fabric so when you're using the Marabou white make sure that you make it a little bit thicker and the black looked beautiful that just came out really well then I fixed it all by ironing it and the black started to stick and I found out that actually that you don't really need to iron now when you do the eyes really bravely go <laughs> um, like I said hover over the top don't scrape it along the felt that will not give you a good line and then do it quite quickly <laughs> so that you know you don't get the jitters oh it's so fun i like this better than sewing on buttons or machine stitching this and then i did the buttons also with three circles in black very nice and here you can see i also did the scarf then it's left overnight and I'm going to fix it by ironing over it and I can put it under my tree. So I wish you all a very Merry Christmas. I hope you enjoy this little project from frogsandfrolics.com where you can find it. Please click on the link in the top right hand corner of the video to access the pattern and of course the website. Bye for now.